various groups yeah, volunteered to fill the void that resulted from the resignation of the scheduled speaker. The void is the right term because it's used in astrophysics. So, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Because this is the last seminar before Christmas, I hope you will enjoy it and wait. Despite the time of the present circumstances, which I can for sure now. Anyway, the talk is about Kamala Gwell. And I represent here the astrophysics group, but actually, on Kamala Gwell, I work mostly individually in my free time. Evenings. <laughs> so, uh, this is the work I will report is, is uh, based on the results and efforts I made uh, recently during the last few years. And it's not finished, so it's the work in progress. Okay, but I will start from some introduction for those of you who uh, are not familiar with astrophysics and the, the, the gamma uh, phenomena. Uh, so we know these sources of very high energetic uh, uh, radiation in the universe uh, from, from uh, something like 50 years now. Uh, they uh, were observed in the 19, uh, in, in, in 1960s, first by the uh, US Air Force uh, were detected and uh, it was thought Initially, that these are not cosmic events, but these are some uh, uh, signs of the nuclear activity on Earth due to some uh, weapon testing. Yeah. yeah, so I think they were detected immediately, mm -hmm. but the result was not published because it was top yes. secret. Yes, it was top secret and it was investigated what it is, but nevertheless, thanks to the studies of these uh, people, clever Southern. Strong and Olsen actually they published in the end the results so can, based can on the Can I make a comment about this catalog. political side of the yes. Tim Wiener book about the CIA, which is a which is a Pulitzer Prize book about the history of the Cold War essentially. The story about that is discussed in some length. Apparently that was one of the, the, the first observation of that I was the highest alert of US for a military system ever declared. They were absolutely sure that, there, that this is something much more complex than just testing the nuclear weapons on the other side of the moon. Because the Vela was looking for explosion hidden from the Earth in India. And actually, there is a hint in this book that in a fact what was then observed was actually an explosion, but not by the Russians. But that was the Israeli South African test of the nuclear weapon. But these guys from the Mars. The what? Okay. Nevertheless, no, so no, these no, guys no. managed to, to find the, the directions to the events and with some good evidence they really thought that these are uh, sources outside the sun and earth and our close neighborhood. And they concluded in the article published in Astrophysical Journal that these are the uh, events of the cosmic origin. And here you can see one of the first uh, light curves measurements of uh, such a burst. So, in time of a uh, couple seconds, uh, we see the outburst in gamma rays like this. The data were not good at that time, but now we have, of course, really a lot. Uh, other measurements, other data, thanks to the satellites launched uh, in the uh, second half of the 20th century. And here you see the current or recent measurements, uh, for instance, by the Batsy satellite, these are the light curves. And uh, a lot of variety in the observations uh, uh, is uh, seen. Uh, the time profiles usually are uh, described uh, with a fast rise and exponential decay, as you see here. But most of these first uh, have uh, substructures, so they, they vary with time more, more, uh, in a more complex way. The durations of these events range from a fraction of a second until a thousand or more. Uh, the longer
first one that I've detected is about 10,000 seconds. So it is uh, interesting, of course, what produces this first and the, the subject of, of my work. Uh, here is the history of observations, uh, as I mentioned, after the Vila satellite was launched, uh, many other uh, detectors were used. And, uh, well, uh, not only in gamma rays, we observe gamma ray bursts, but also in other energy bands, also in the uh, optical band, for instance, we detect the afterglow, so after the burst, there is a glow of optical emission uh, lasting for a few uh, weeks or months, also in the radio band. In the X-rays, uh, what is interesting, for instance, there, there was a detection by XMM-Newton uh, X-ray satellite uh, with the emission lines of, of such elements uh, in, the, in the gamma ray first uh, spectra. Mm. What, what, what is important here, maybe, maybe this discovery made by the Patsy satellite, uh, which was operating until the year and here you see the map uh, of uh, almost 3,000 bursts uh, detected by Batsy. So this image shows definitely that uh, the bursts are not uh, only extraterrestrial, uh, but also extragalactic because they do not concentrate here uh, in, in the vicinity of the galactic plane. They are very distant uh, uh, sources and uh, of course, in, in the afterglow, uh, if we identify the host galaxy of, of such a burst, we can uh, have information about the distance due to the redshift measurement to the host galaxy. So then we really know that these bursts are of the uh, cosmological origin. Uh, on the right plot, you see the uh, histogram of durations uh, from the BATSE data, and you see here two clear uh, peaks, which refer to the commonly uh, uh, divided uh, sample, uh, two samples uh, of short and long gamma ray bursts. Short ones are these on the left, they are last uh, below two seconds, and the long ones from uh, another part of this histogram, they are longer than two seconds. So this suggests that uh, to the people that uh, we are dealing with two different types of uh, sources or progenitors which are responsible for these events. Uh, here is the uh, more recent sample uh, of the uh, gamma rivers detected by the SWIFT satellite. Uh, this is the NASA uh, mission uh, which is still ongoing and uh, until the year 2015, over 1,000 camera bursts were detected. So you see also the durations here. Actually, SWIFT is uh, probably uh, more sensitive to the short bursts and that there are more of them. Uh, <coughs> and also, uh, it detected uh, quite a few of very long camera bursts, marked here with the red color. So again, maybe yet another type of uh, event uh, or something very weird is responsible. But this distribution the seems to contradict the previous one. Yes, it, it does. It does somehow. But it, it can be the, the satellite's uh, property. It's different energy bands. It is different energy bands. It is a different uh, detector. Uh, still, people are rather uh, conservative with the view that there are two groups. But here you are right uh, that these two groups may look differently. I'm not observer, so I cannot comment more on this. Uh, what I was also wanted to show you uh, uh, about this distinction between the short and long gamma ray burst is their hardness. Uh, so the, the hardness is defined by the by the fluence ratio in, in some chosen energy bands, like here, for calculated the SWIFT sample hardness ratio, they took um, the energies between 2550 and 5200 kiloelectronovolts. And you see here the long ones from different groups from the short definitely and this intermediate 
also have some uh, intermediate properties. Okay. So, what is the theory <coughs> behind this gamma reverse? Because what we observe, of course, is this short term event, the, the, the short term <coughs> spectrum. But, uh, well, we can, we can also say about uh, distance, so then the total energy involved in, in this. Uh, event is really important information. But before the distance or the redshifts to the host galaxies were measured, uh, people did not know what is responsible for the gamma reverse explosion or if it is a really huge explosion or, or if it is a local event and it is small. So by the year uh, 1992, uh, over 100 of theoretical models were proposed to explain. Uh, and they differed in localizations by many orders of magnitude uh, and uh, hence the total energy requirements differed by 20 orders of magnitude. So examples uh, of the theoretical explanations ranged from uh, magnetic reconnections in the solar um, or in the heliopause uh, in our solar system up to the cosmic streams. So. Can I ask them? Maybe yes. you don't know much about it, but there, there was this news in the newspapers about the atmospheric lightnings, that they are source of this, all over the sudden people discovered they are source of enormous bursts of X-rays and programs of gamma rays. Is that a true fact or it, it's, it's in your, the New York Times news, physics or is it true physics? I, I didn't read, so I don't know. I, I think this there are events like that. Yeah. It's, it's understanding. It's concerned. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, it is not the gamma ray yeah, it, 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 it has right. been a big event in the newspapers. However, uh, when I search through the even a popular science databases, there is essentially nothing. About I saw recently a paper on that, but I didn't read very, very carefully. In, 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 a, in a very specialized journal or something, it right? It was submitted to APJ, actually, yeah. uh -huh. an astrophysical journal. Because it's, uh, uh, I mean, if that was the, the case, right, why, why did we survive? I mean, there are so many lightnings. As far as I know, it's, it's rather few lightnings. What? It's rather few lightnings per year. Per year. But even I few lightnings, are, if they had been a source of such an enormous radiation, nothing in the vicinity of that lightning it's not enormous. Should survive. No, it's not enormous, but it's detectable, and it's interesting. <laughs> and there are four events. I, if, if, as long as I remember, there are only four events. Well, I mean, what, what was written was that they are comparable to the in energy to the gamma ray burst. Mm -hmm. Well, now the, the question is which, which value you are using. Uh, which the observing value is. So, so I understand that it's now not. Yeah. Uh, no, it's okay. I mean, I could be, maybe you know something more about it. Yes. It's just a history now. Uh, but okay, the first ever um, preprint in the archive, by the way, uh, dealt with gamma ray burst uh, and uh, the explanation of the origin of the gamma ray burst uh, with the cosmic uh, mergers of compact remnants, I mean, uh, compact stars. Uh, neutron stars here were uh, studied and, and investigated as a possibility to, to be responsible for the gamma ray burst. And the author, one of the authors of this uh, uh, first archive prepping is Professor Bogdan Paczynski, uh, who worked then uh, in uh, uh, the United States with Professor Narayan and Spitiran. So here they envisage really a new uh, and uh, finally accepted uh, explanation for the gamma ray burst origin. Uh, also, uh, some years later, in 1998, Professor Paczynski himself, uh, uh, in, in a, uh, this article, proposed yet another explanation for the gamma ray burst, no, not with the compact uh, binary merger, but with the failed supernova or the hypernova explosion. Uh, and uh, here he used this term for the first time uh, and now we use it as a kind of a keyword uh, what is the high
hypernova. So the hypernova is the explosion of the massive rotating star, mm, more energetic than the supernova, normal supernova, and also faint in the sense that not all the matter is ejected instantaneously or immediately in the supernova event, but some of the matter due to rotation keeps close to the collapsing core of the star, uh, close to the black hole, forms a rotating disk and accretes at a huge rate onto this newly born black hole. And as we know from other studies of accreting black holes, this uh, should be connected with the emission or ejection of a bipolar jets along the axis of rotation of such a disk, which uh, collides with the axis of rotation of a black hole. And these jets should be responsible ultimately for the gamma ray bursts, uh, acceleration of the particles and gamma ray emission at, uh, long, uh, at some, some distance from, from, the, from the core. Uh, and really, it uh, fits to our understanding that the, the required energy for the gamma ray burst, which when we take into account the distance and the flux uh, of radiation incoming to the Earth. Also, we correct for the beaming, because such a jet should be beamed uh, in the narrow cone. Uh, so we do not really have the isotropic emission, but we have a beamed emission. But when we correct, for the, this meaning, I, I'm not sure if the figure is good enough, but here, the energy required uh, for, for uh, these bursts is on the order of 10 to 52 eggs. So it is a huge uh, energy, and the only available source of energy we know in astrophysics is the accretion onto the uh, compact star, accretion onto the black hole. Uh, so you can estimate here, for instance, the gravitational uh, potential energy available uh, and uh, using the orders of magnitude we know for the neutron stars' sizes and uh, the, their uh, masses, we have available energy uh, thanks to such a process. Uh, excuse me, uh, are there any computer simulations of this type of failed supernova yes. explosions? Yes, yes. Computer simulations are all about mm -hmm. everything. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's really very difficult. It is, it is very so you know difficult. The standard uh, supernova uh, explosions to be Yes, difficult. for the failed supernova, there is two. Yeah. Uh, several groups in the US. I will show you that the, well, I have something, but of course, I will not tell about every kind of simulations people do. <laughs> Uh, so, to sum up, there is uh, the progenitors, we now, we now understand that they range from measures of compact stars to collapses of the uh, massive rotating stars. Uh, the massive star must form a black hole inside, and uh, statistically, uh, something like 10% of all collapsing stars are rotating uh, fast enough to, to have the, the fate supernova or the hypernova. Possibility, uh, thanks to the rotating disk uh, and accretion onto this black hole. And then, not all supernova are connected with the universe, <coughs> but uh, some uh, percentage uh, of them. And statistically, it seems to be more or less okay. The models we build must account, of course, for the energy of this explosion for the variability of the event, which is tricky because yeah, lots of processes need to be taken into account, and the range of durations. This is the cartoon figure which summarizes what I said uh, before. So we have basically two main classes of model studies for the last 20 years. 25 years, long gamma reverse and short gamma reverse, and both of them actually involve this process of accretion onto the black hole because also in the case of the short gamma reverse and merger of two compact stars, two neutron stars, one of them collapses and forms the black hole, but the other is disrupted uh, and remainings of its matter may form also a rotating uh, torus, which is much smaller in this case than, than here. And then 
less matter is available for accretion, uh, the short, short duration uh, of the engine's activity is responsible for the short duration of the jets, which are very transient and uh, last a couple of, of seconds. And hence we, we observe short time papers. Okay, what was important also to prove uh, to, to, to give an additional uh, observational support for the uh, collapse of a massive star and the hypernova um, scenario was the detection of the association of some gamma ray bursts with the uh, supernova, with the underlying supernova. Because, for instance, here, uh, this gamma ray burst from uh, March 2003 was associated two weeks, uh, years from April to May. There was a spectrum, underlying spectrum of the supernova detected after uh, the prompt gamma reverse explosion. And such observations were made for many other yeah, GRBs, long GRBs then, and uh, that they are connected with the um, massive stars uh, deaths. This cartoon shows uh, roughly uh, our um, understanding of so, so, uh, whatever we, we have here, this collapsing massive star, we do not uh, see what is going on here, we do not see this black hole, uh, we do not see the stars, I will tell you uh, in a minute how it uh, should be um, built, but, but the matter is very dense and compact, so we do not see it. We see the expanding envelope some time after the burst, but first we see the emission in gamma ray burst from these fast expanding jets. Uh, and people uh, say that the acceleration of particles and the emission of gamma rays uh, from these uh, jets is due to the shocks, so the, the, the ejection of globs in, in such a jet, and the shocks form and energetic particles uh, escape from. Uh, from here, at, uh, when the matter becomes eventually transparent to this radiation. What is the explanation of the beam here? If this is a spherical object, how come the beam is just in one direction? Uh, Some kind of instability? Or? Well, beam, well, it's, it's not a spherical because we have rotation, yes. I'm talking about the collapse of the Yes, the collapse red is, giant. is not a spherical because the star must rotate. So it's rotation of the it's star. It's rotation of the, of the, of the, of the star. Well, for the collimation of the jet, the, the, there's, there's mm -hmm. various possibilities how to collimate really the jet into the narrow angle. It is not so, so easy. But the direction but the, in the plane perpendicular yeah, the, the, to the axis of rotation is it, arbitrary. It is, yeah, it is uh, maybe confusing. This cartoon should be <laughs> in, in, in the vertical uh, in direction. But this is the rotation axis here. There seems to be a, uh, some distinction of the positive charge. It's just a, an example of of the of the reaction that can happen here. Yes, yes. Uh, yes also yes. negative. Yes, of course, there's uh, electrons and positrons, basically, and that's, yeah. Okay, here, here I have yeah, one, one of the examples of a simulation of such a jet, because I do not do it myself, but there is, uh, as I told you, there is uh, several groups uh, in, the, uh, in the community of astrophysics that, that uh, model such jets and explosions from the massive stars uh, and breakthrough, it is also uh, important how to make the jets so fast and energetic to break through this uh, envelope, which is, which is uh, huge. So this animation is, is uh, made by the group of uh, Professor Wuzay from Caltech, and here you can just observe and enjoy the movie, uh, how the hydro simulation works. Uh, the map shows the density uh, logarithm with the colors. Uh, the, the distance scale is on the order of 10 to 10 centimeters in such a star. And the jet, as you see, is quite um, low density. Let's show it again. Mm. This is the density in, in I think, CGS units. Breakthrough. And then 
and it's some 10 to 12 centimeters or, or, or more to start of centimeters. <coughs> yeah, this is yet another cartoon, maybe more, more convincing because it is in the vertical direction. So yeah. Let's not uh, uh, stay too long with the cartoons. I show you some equations. <laughs> Uh, because of course, what we are interested in uh, is the is the progenitor and also this black hole and how to fit the black hole, how to produce the jet and, and how to fit the model of accretion. Because I, I worked on accretion models for many years, I tried to build a model of accretion in the context of gamma ray burst. And uh, well, of course, to, to 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 build a model of accretion, basically uh, needs to consider the hydrodynamics or also MHD and we need to solve basic equations such as the continuity equation for the, for the mass, the energy equation and conservation of momentum. And we start with simplest cases uh, in this hydrodynamics neglecting the magnetic fields which is uh, um, simplification in a, in a, a big sense. Uh, we built a classical model of accretion disk with the alpha prescription, the uh, viscous dissipation of energy in such a disk with the pressure, uh, with some constant alpha called here. Uh, the dynamics is uh, either stationary or time dependent, but uh, of course initially we do not consider the um, GR uh, effects, just the pseudo Newtonian potentials. And still we can, uh, using also the ideal gas description, we can build a simple model. But this is Really simple, such works uh, started in, uh, How it is possible years ago. that such a, such a system is described realistically by the idea of that? No, it is not realistic. I will, I'm not going to the question. I mean, I, I remember that, yes. well, it was so many years ago, but when Maria Ekel and I wrote a review article on realistic hydrodynamics, we were flabbergasted by the fact that the numbers used by astronomers never fit to mm -hmm. the description of the idea of gas. I mean, the idea of gas mm -hmm. must have a collision. What to collide mm -hmm. with what? The, 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 it's dust. No, but no. The, the equation of state mm -hmm. for dust is very much different than the idea of gas. I mean, the, I mean, unless you, you, you mean something wrong, different than no. Uh, yeah, that says P equal N K T. Yes. Okay. Then, then, then not, gas, not, 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 yes. no numbers works for that equation of state. What I want to say is that we need to start from something, and this this work started 15 years ago. And first, they used ideal <coughs> gas because they could not uh, start from anything simpler. Then they determined uh, via such models what is the density and what is the temperature of such a disk, and then they see that for these densities and temperatures the, the gas is not ideal, then we improve. Yes, this is the iterative work, also iteration, I mean uh, uh, discussions between people and uh, common understanding of, of the phenomenon. But, uh, well, in astrophysics we start from simple, then we complicate, and then we have to go back to the simplest. Yes, to, to, to understand something more than our uh, computer simulations. This is difficult field. Uh, as I said, yeah, you have the second point here. The EOS is not ideal. We have the hyper accretion rates for people in the astrophysics that we are uh, using uh, normal accreting black holes uh, in the quasars or, or in the uh, X-ray binaries that accrete for many uh, years, years or hundreds of years with the rate of I don't know, uh, 10 to minus 9 solar mass per second, yes. Here we have one solar mass per second. This order of magnitude, yes, so, so this is the scaling, uh, scaling parameter of everything. Uh, then we end up with densities in the range of 10 to 12, 10 to 11 grams per centimeter cube. So this is a huge density, maybe less than in the neutron star, which is 10 to 14, but still it is a nuclear density, and also temperatures are on, on the order of MeV. 
so the so the gas is not ideal. There is the reactions we need to take into account. The nuclear reactions and the chemical balance needs to be solved, of course, with a proper description of of, of this microphysics. Okay, so, so what we had later, uh, following the, the works of, of Di Matteo and, and myself, uh, we used some uh, more complex formula for the equation of state, which is the gas and radiation and degenerate pressure of degenerate electrons here, which scales with the density to the power of 4 over 3. Uh, and we had some some results, I will not spend much time on this here. Is it the energy? Mm, what, what? What, we, what we are reading, is it the energy? This is the pressure, this is oh, the it's total pressure oh, okay, consisting okay, okay, okay. of, of uh, okay, three components, gas, radiation and degenerate electrons. And that's a Thomas Fermi expression, yeah? This? Yeah, yeah this is a yeah, textbook expression. Yeah, but it, it makes the, the Hydrodynamical model more complex. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, once you wrote this thing, you can easily calculate, even without Mathematica, what is the velocity of sound. Uh, yes. And what happens to the sound balls in this model? I mean, the, the, I mean if, 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 if there is something described by that equation of state, then dp over zero is different from zero, so I can calculate the square root of it. And that's that's the velocity of sound. And w what happens to this? They don't propagate. I mean, what, what well, happens the to the sound? Is what happens? What, what is the? F uh, yeah, well, there are all sorts of things we were we going to discuss as uh, shock waves and God knows what. And the question is, what happens to the sound balls? What happens? They carry incredible energy. Why incredible? Because you can calculate that how much is the energy contained in the sound balls in the system. Of course, assuming the. Uh, are that depends on the population of different modes. No, that depends on the initial conditions. Yeah, that's right. The, not the population. Are the modes. Modes. And if you have this explosion, which eventually leads to this burst, it must also, as in any hydrodynamical solution, create enormous amount of the sound mode. And yeah, what happens to them? They cannot propagate out of the system because they don't go into vacuum. What happens to them? What happens so we to them? cannot hear. Well, at <laughs> least we don't, well, unless, of course, this, the, the, the movies. But uh, here, this, uh, we were here a lot on Friday, right? Uh, of the sun. But what, what happens to this energy? It, 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 what, what, what happens to this enormous? What, enormous or not enormous? There is a some energy carried by the sound modes in the system. What happens to that energy? It is propagating and what? It is doing something with this whole system, isn't it? Because it cannot escape. So it, it, it somehow converts also in something. It cannot disappear. Unless, 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 Unless we assume that the conservation of energy is not happening. The energy never disappears. Yeah, it, yeah, That's how we but it was assumed. So yeah. right. But so far we, we learned what is the expression for the pressure. What are the equations that you are eventually solving? Yeah, there okay. was, there was, there was, this uh, is the intermediate step, this is the pressure. Yes. Sure. Okay. So, so I spent maybe two minutes more on this equation of state to show you then what are the actual equations I'm solving. This month, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, I wrote maybe in words uh, in, in the initial slide that I'm solving the conservation energy or mass conservation and momentum equation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, so, so here, numerical but you do not solve time dependent hydrodynamic equations, though. Yes, I do. You yeah. do. Yeah. But, but then, but then, from the stationary yeah, Professor Tursky's modes are yes. automatically included. Of course. Yes. So there is no question whatsoever. Yes. These are not some extra. Of course. Mm -hmm. the, these are contained in evolution. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, okay, for this equation I, I'm, I'm having now, it's not a sum of, of components.
components, analytical, but now uh, I sort, sort the fully numerical uh, errors, uh, and this gas is assumed to be in beta equilibrium, so there is a balance of beta reactions, and we have three protons, neutrons, electrons, positrons here, and uh, also neutrinos are produced. And they are formed in the electron-positron uh, capture on nucleons uh, and also some other less important reactions energetically, such as the per annihilation nucleon structure and platinum decay. And what is important also that these leptons and virions may have arbitrary degeneracy level. So we have to compute really the pressure using the fermi dirac distributions. And here is this form for the, uh, yeah, for, for the uh, nuclear pressures, including mm -hmm. the neutrons, protons, and electron positron pairs. So we have these Fermi Dirac integrals here on the order K uh, with the generacy, uh, uh, well, intermediate yeah, level mm -hmm. of the generacy, so we need to also uh, solve for this. Here are these other uh, here are the reactions, the main reactions that produce uh, neutrinos, yes, because well, I, I should stress this. This matter is so dense and so hot that no photons can escape and fully uh, by radiation is negligible in, in such an accretion days mm -hmm. uh, in gamma ray based engines. So we can have the cooling either by direct advection of energy on the black hole or by emission of uh, neutrinos. This neutrino cooling is, is uh, balancing the heating quite by the scotic uh, So these neutrinos are produced uh, first in these uh, reactions of electrons and positron uh, with nucleons. Mm. And the rates are, of course, very complex. I, I'm not here, but they are given um, by, by in the literature. We must satisfy the balance between uh, protons uh, and uh, neutrons uh, in <coughs> densities. Uh, so, uh, with the forward and backward reactions uh, here. Mm -hmm. And also some additional conservation laws, uh, the baryon conservation and the charge neutrality conservation, take into account also that there is positrons, yes, and uh, helium, yes, helium particles, alpha particles are also uh, forming here. So, uh, some less important processes which lead also to the neutrino pooling uh, in such a plasma are these three reactions that uh, as some positron annihilations now that's down and this plasma decay, uh, whatever they are, they, they lead to the formation not only of the uh, electron neutrinos but also the muon and tau neutrinos can be uh, produced. Here and finally we give the expression for the cooling uh, by neutrinos taking into account the absorption and the scattering of, of neutrinos in this uh, dense disk. They depend on them. So that's the simple <laughs> Stefan law. Yes, yes, this is just the so called uh, two stream approximation. Just the coefficient. Uh, approximation we do not have transport. And what is H? H is, a, is a the thickness, yes, it's the scale oh, height, yes. Uh, uh, are neutrino oscillations ever taken into account? No, no, no. These are very complicated. I'm just going to fix it, but that's it. Here, no. I, I, I don't know if anybody yeah. took this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the scale is 15 to example. Okay, here is, yeah, the structure. Maybe, maybe I'll show you the dependence of, of this equation. Maybe temperature and density here for a, for a fixed density on the left and for a fixed temperature on the right because this is a two, two parameter uh, table. Yes, with the 
distribution of state and have, so that the resulting distributions of uh, electron fraction with temperature of the pressure and uh, entropy mm, density uh, and the neutral case, as you see, decreases hugely with the temperature, but then it drops somehow because the neutrinos can be partially trapped. are quite smooth with entropy we have some, uh, some jump here but actually we do not reach in the gamma reverse engines I study they, they, they are roughly below this value of density okay so then we want to go beyond the alpha alpha disk of Shapura and Sunyayev and to have the better uh, description also of the gravity and, and uh, hydrodynamics, so, so we went uh, for the um, um, relativistic magnetohydrodynamics uh, model uh, using the two-dimensional um, description uh, with a code called HARM here because it is a really HARM for everybody who starts using it. <laughs> but the, uh, abbreviation stands for high accuracy uh, relativistic hydrodynamics and the code was written uh, by a group of Charles Kami in Gamma is the CP over CV. Yes. Uh, yes. Gamma the, here, yes. Yeah, so it's a polytropic exponent. Yes, this is the exponent here. It's gamma. So it's not ideal. That's not. Confusion of. Yeah, here it is. Yes. No, what, because yeah. the, the equation of state is a polytropic. Here is, is this equation of state in the in the original code by Charles. Yes. So yeah. There is no contribution to the energy from just electromagnetic field. Uh, electromagnetic field and gas. No, no, no. But there's yes. no potential for the electromagnetic field because it depends on the velocity. If velocity. There should be some contribution from the electromagnetic uh, Velocity, omio, omio, this is the four velocities. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry this for is the not this, is this, is not, this is not the tensor for the electromagnetic field. It does not depend on the velocity. Uh, maybe it is when you write it down on, in a specific uh, frame. It may be written down in a frame dependent manner, which introduces some curious. Yes, it's in a. Yeah. No, because this is not. Uh, but maybe it depends on you. It's, it's just you know, you use this B, you see. Yeah. I see the B, however, you know, in yeah. this state, the U, the, the standard tensor for the electromagnetic field does not depend on U. Yeah, that's yes, true. but if you write it down using E and B, the in three vectors, it may, it may it look makes as it. if it was. Yeah, because yeah. it's not for moving. Well, so U, U disappears. Yes, yeah. I, I believe that it might be the case. Here. Yeah, but let's look at the last term. It's the u mu u mu times f whatever, and you and there is no way how you can annihilate u mu u mu. That's right. So this at least it's not so obvious that that this disappear. Okay. I'm not sure about this. Yes. Yeah. It is assumed here, if you would use your interpretation, that the electric field is zero. Yes, this is the first three approximation that the uh, Lorentz force vanishes in a ah, okay. linear energy. It's a question. So this is it's a question. Electric field. Electric field. Yeah, because it's otherwise you would have a problem with the ohm law. Okay. Because yes. in a, this is a this is a fancy way of getting rid of the ohm of explicit form of the ohm law. So there is only the and is that is why it's called B because it's yeah. only the magnetic field. Yeah. The yeah. contribution. Yeah. So yeah. there is because it's 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 okay. because it's it's a, it's a frame of reference where E plus V plus B is equal to it's zero. It's an ideal conductor. It's an ideal conductor, ideal conductor and that is that yes. E plus V plus B is equal to zero. So yeah. that's why. Yeah. Okay. So it's an ohm law. Mm -hmm. So okay, but we don't want this. Yeah, we don't want this. So I took the crowd and tried to, to work with this and uh, substitute this polytropic whatever equation with the, my tables. 
Okay, so how is the numerical scheme built in this code? Because this is important. It is not that you just take one equation and put the other one in the code and you have everything done. You need to really rebuild and go deeply into the numerical scheme which is used here. Uh, so basically the code was written by Charles and it uses a set of conserved variables which are the physical variables conserved in, 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 in the evolution and the primitive variables which are our normal um, uh, what physical what we understand the density and the three velocities measured by some stand observer so, so it is working on the uh, conservative uh, way uh, while here f are the classes and s are the source terms and if we have non-relativistic MHD, everything is simple because we can have forward and backward uh, transformations between these two uh, sets of variables uh, between momentum energy and, uh, and mass density. But in the relativistic MHD, it is not like this. Uh, uh, the inversion must be calculated uh, numerically every time step. And there are some uh, schemes for, for, for this. Also, routines are available in, in, in whoever you ask. Uh, he can give you an advice what to choose for the set of concept and for the set of primitive variables and uh, how to work with the transformations. <coughs> Basically, what is chosen here is the set of eight concept variables. Is the, uh, this density measured by the normal uh, observer and these uh, four and here the B is the magnetic field vectors and they appear to be simplest because they are both conserved and primitive here in this The primitive rest mass density internal energy and three velocities, yes. And what is interesting for the AOC is the rest mass density and internal energy, of course. So we need to revert the scheme every time step, find the values of the pressure in the table, then go back, proceed with evolution and so forth. Okay, so, so we did, I don't know, well, I, I did it last month, so I don't know still probably not so well. <laughs> uh, there is, yeah, components of the, as I said, they are both concerned and primitive, so they, they are uh, analytically solved, uh, but for the rest five equations, for the rest five of, of uh, variables, we need to use the multidimensional uh, newton raphson iteration, for instance, or some other method, but this is the one um, suggested by, by people. Um, it is simple, for the adiabatic relation of pressure, but it is not simple for the numerical AOS. Uh, so I must compute also from my tables dp over um, enthalpy uh, over v square and, and put into the scheme, interpolate, compute Jacobian matrix and evolve the concept variables and proceed. I still don't understand how you close the set of equations because what you use is basically the energy momentum conservation. Now there are many ingredients. And continuity of equation. Yeah, continuity yes. equation. And the equation and of this, the state. And this, this, yes, this but there are many components here. Yes. And each component, the electrons, the nuclei, <coughs> evolve separately. So how can you close this set of equations without having this additional information for what is the energy which is attributed to various components of this complicated system? That, that is taking care of all this chemical equation. Yes, this is taken very in the table of the AOS. It is like the yes. people who, who this is basically so a very very sophisticated computer program which does the same thing as in any factory manufacturing fluorescent light. Where where you have to tell the way you write equation for a plasma plus a set of a chemical equation describe how this ion goes into that ion. Here, instead of ions, you have so electrons, protons, so baryons, and kind of constitutive relations, constitutive relations which in distribute the energy in, among in, the, in, the, in the fluorescent okay. lamp business. It's called Sahar equations. Yes, 
the, the, the equations of balance between various chemical components reacting in this yeah. business. And that, if, if it's written, then it sample, but in relativistic case, it's more complex and more sophisticated and more scientific, but it, it's engineering type of Yeah, it is engineering. Okay, so I, I'll show you some results of what we see here. <laughs> Study of the of the accretion torus uh, in GR in, in the gamma ray test engine, uh, and we start here from the 2D uh, equilibrium solution as a initial condition. So we start from the equilibrium torus in the pressure equilibrium. We described by Fishbond and Abramovich in the 70s, and we evolve it with our scheme. So this movie will show the density. Distribution in such a torus, you see how it starts accreting onto this black hole here. The density scaling with the physical units here, although the, the code itself works with dimensionless. And of course, accretion through the horizon of the black hole is, is possible because we work. The density scale, as I said, is, is determined by, the, by our assumption of the mass of the star. <laughs> Going from the dimensionless units, we, we assume the, the mass of the, of the black hole and mass of the, of the torus. Okay, then the magnetic field. Yes, we impose onto, onto such our initial condition, mm -hmm. our initial configuration of the magnetic field with uh, values possibilities, but here I use the initial poloidal magnetic field uh, with lines making loops along the constant uh, density um, pressures, and we can see how the uh, magnetic field evolves. Here with impression, we, we see the turbulence developing, the, the, the magnetic turbulence, and also the uh, color scale here shows the uh, gas to magnetic pressure ratio, so, so here is the gas dominated region and here but is the magnetic I don't understand how come that there is, uh, unless you use the word mm -hmm. turbulent in a different sense, because your equations did not have the viscosity. No, but they have uh, energy turbulence. Yes, yeah, there is no alpha viscosity. No. There's, there's so in what sense is this? Yeah, well, are, they, the are they just simply instabilities uh, of an oil? Well, they, because, I mean, whatever it's written, so far they were Euler equations. No viscosity. No. So the rate of number is, is the, the rate yes. of number does not exist. Magnetic and rotation. Magnetic rotation. Yeah, never mind. But there is no, I don't know, but I mean, turbulence must be referred to as dissipative force. Right? So you have to have a dissipative co transport coefficient in your equations. In order to talk about the no. to talk about the, the turbulence, mm -hmm. because the turbulence is governed by a rate of number, a rate of number depends on the dissipative coefficient. So somewhere the viscosity or a conductivity, and you kill the conductivity because it's ideal mm -hmm. yes, it's uh, yes. ideal conductor. Therefore, there, there must be a dissipative coefficient in order to generate. But the dissipation is in the numerical scheme. In what? Neutrinos, for example. No, 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 no. But we have, uh, 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 neutrinos, this is, uh, these are words. No, which are not words. No, are no, not. In this <laughs> theory, there is a set of chemical components labeled neutrinos, protons, <laughs> electrons, and the, uh, don't, don't, let's don't confuse. And we have hydrodynamic equations which were. Non dissipative. Yeah. Neutrinos escape. Yeah. <coughs> but then, of course, it, some, some. So there is. So, yeah, so, is so, there's, so, then this cool. equation. Neutrinos cool. Yeah, but that was not in the equation. It must be in this. Yeah, and that is, I'm asking, where is the. You, you say cool. Then, then there is a dissipative coefficient which tells that something is. 
and uh, it's in these chemical norms. They don't have their conservation laws. The, these chemical oh, equations tell that the no, no, no. protons plus electrons on whatever confer in something. No, but there are neutrinos. All numbers All this neutrino no, number that, that was written. But I suppose neutrinos can be the domain. Yeah, but we had the equations which so had no effects. We did not see the ah, chemical the equations. No, we yeah. saw the no. No. chemical yeah. Then the, continu then, the, then the continuity equation must have a right hand side because a roller is a sum of whatever components, including neutrinos. And then, therefore, the continuity equation must have a right hand side. Therefore, the equation should be d rho dt plus d mu rho, whatever, is equal minus alpha rho. And that alpha coefficient, which can be calculated from whatever. Or a beta or gamma or, or zeta. No, 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 no. no, no. If, if, if sure. Professor Gavinist yeah. is right that okay. the neutrinos yeah. are not conserved, then the the, the they are coefficient. We can relate the viscosity with this beta, this magnetic to, to gas pressure, like the viscosity of the magnetic field. I mean, that, that's impossible the because yeah. a magnetic field cannot transform energy. So the, the viscosity dissipation cannot be related to the magnetic field because the motion in the magnetic field conserves energy. And viscosity is violating momentum and energy. Yeah. There are two, two, two points in which they, and that, that is why the Raynaud number is, is important. If there is a turbo, there must be a, I mean, what I know, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, uh, that there are always this confusion that the or, or there's something we don't generally understand from the concept of it. Maybe I should shut up at the moment. Difficult to understand. I shut what up. I wanted to say, oh, using the word turbulence, is that here you have the magnetic field like this. Yes. What, what is this? Yeah. 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 Because, uh, you because, we, because we know the that all that equation, even no, no, let me just compute why, why I was upset. Because we know that this simple all that equation for non relativistic fluid with the arbitrary equation of state in the form of a p is equal to a function of rho, these equations are generically unstable. And in the finite time, they generate instabilities, yeah. but those instabilities have nothing to do with turbulence, yeah. right? And we don't know what is the spectrum because we only know that they exist, those instabilities, but we don't, don't, don't have anything about it, how, how, what happens with those instabilities. Here, everything is much more complicated than this simple hydrodynamics. So how do I know that this beautiful so the, there are numerical things which are behind that, and it depends on the degree. Yeah, but in I mean, some they, points, I, mean, really I don't listen. I mean, they, 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 they make they, if they, they are only numerical, they may be simply the errors of a numerical method used mm -hmm. in the calculation. But this is this is that, but how should I bother with this? Somebody, I mean, if this is a physical phenomenon, it has to be explained by the physical process. That, I mean, if, if it's only the numerical, then it might be completely mistaken that somebody uses a different grid or use different method of solving those equations. So and bingo, it comes that the picture looks very different. What was red is now yellow or whatever. So the artifact. It's completely yeah. artifact. On the top of everything, it's the artifact. I think it's high time yeah. Professor Tursky would look into the details and yes. tell these people how to do the grid. Then I have yes. to go to the test. Well, the other picture shows the directions and magnitude of the velocity. You would like to know how, how looks the velocity field here, so you see this turbulent storm is here. Flow uh, accretes slowly. 
So basically the conclusion was that both the neutrino annihilation and the rotation of the uh, black hole can power the gamma reverse energetics. Okay, this I will probably skip because I'm too long now. <laughs> Just additional uh, slides. So the summary of this talk is we carry uh, GRMT simulations of the uh, the Marifer central engine, uh, we do it numerically using the equation of state, which is no longer an ideal gas. We 
we use the, our own code and the HAM code uh, combined together and uh, we compare the efficiency of uh, GRB jet powering the, uh, through the neutrino annihilation and through the rotation of the black hole. Further work is in progress, of course. For 3D computations in general, are a must here, but um, of course we also can do something with the current state of the of the code. Just for instance, update the metric, the mass of uh, and spin of the black hole through the evolution, and eventually match everything with everything and have a general picture of application and unify gamma reverse with IGN and microquasars. And that could maybe satisfy Professor Tursky because then you could maybe define even the effective viscosity ah. for whatever is yes. working backwards from yes. so much backwards. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the system is so complex that probably mm -hmm. just pointing your finger at the viscosity is maybe very hard. But if the, if the spectrum is right, then. So please, for I mean, the, you have the hydrodynamic equations. It's a maybe solution. Since so. lambda, you know where to put the dissipative coefficient by no. symmetry of those no, equations. It's much more complicated. It's much more complicated. But that's an average equation which was solved. That was only one row, one u. There was no separate. You, 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 you are talking about the neutrinos, I know. But there are, but there, there, there so are many not different views yeah. there. There are no different velocities for each component. That's gone. It's only one U, one row, and something. Therefore, in the conservation of momentum equation, the viscosity coefficients are well defined. They, they, they are, I mean, the value is not defined, but if they exist, we know exactly where they should sit by a symmetry of the equations. There's no, 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 no. I mean, that's how the Lambda Lifshitz has derived the Nati Stock equations in two lines in his book. I mean, the fact that these gentlemen work hard for months to get these equations is irrelevant. I mean, the, we have a land of lifts for it. We know where the viscosity can sit. We don't know how much it will be. And we know that there are only two of these coefficients, a shear and bulk viscosity, that there will be no more by the structure of those equations. <laughs> Okay. Hard is also a